So finding a comfortable seated pose, whatever that might mean for you, uh, whether that means sitting cross-legged or I'm sitting in heroes, seated on my heels. But I've always done this since I was a little kid. <laughs> when you sit up straight, let your spine extend, close the eyes, Take three deep breaths, in and out through the nose, slow and steady. Now claim this time as your sacred space. This is your time just for you. Let everything else go. Separate yourself from the exterior and cross over consciously into inner awareness. If you have a blessing, prayer, mantra, poem, or words that bring you joy, Repeat those to yourself now to bless your practice. Allow those words of joy to spread throughout your whole body and make a conscious decision to stay focused on your body and how energy moves during your asana practice today. If it resonates for you, bring your hands into prayer on Janali Mudra, palms pressing lightly against each other in front of the heart on a Hatha Chakra. Take a deep breath in slowly. If you need to adjust your legs at any time, do so then get right back in for our opening meditation. I want you just now to focus here at the base of your throat. As you inhale, feel the air crossing over the base of your throat. And as you exhale, notice as the breath passes the base of your throat on its way out. Now shift your attention to the area around your heart as you inhale, feel the area expanding in your chest with each breath in. Then feel the area around your heart contracting as you exhale. So now focus on the air going past that throat and right into the space in the middle of the torso, filling your lungs fully, the space around your heart. Stay focused on the pranayama, feeling the space around your heart with each breath. Feel it expand and contract. Now feel the area around your heart growing and expanding with pure white energy. Each breath cleaning out the space around your heart. And if it resonates with you, come into Padmasana Mudra, Lotus Mudra, leaving your little fingers and thumbs touching. Allow the other fingers to begin to expand away from each other, opening out in the shape of a blooming lotus. Take three more breaths here, filling your hands with your heart energy. Then slowly bring your dominant hand to your physical heart side, the other hand resting on top. 
Feel all that energy now moving back into your heart space. Feel the power of your energy. Recognize and acknowledge that you are an energetic being. And where you place your attention, all of your energy flows. So keep that attention focused on yourself as we begin to move into postures. Taking your time with no hurry at all, slowly rock back onto your feet or swing your legs around behind you and begin to make your way up to standing position. Take as much time as you'd like. Go even slower. Even slower than that. Take your time. And as you come up to standing, allow the hands to begin to float away from your side, weightless and light. Press down through the feet and begin to energetically extend your arms up and overhead. As the hands come palms facing each other, take a big breath in. And on the exhale, slowly forward fold. Press through those arms, energetically soft knees as you fold. Drop the head, tuck the chin in round the back, lift the tailbone high. Inhale, lift up halfway. In this vinyasa class, we're moving with our breath. Exhale, fold. Rounding back, tuck your chin and lift your hips tall. Inhale, circle those arms all the way around. This time, exhale, bring those hands to the heart center. Take one breath cycle here. Press through the feet and energetically extend up through the arms as you look up, exploring a back bend. Exhale, swan dive, hinge forward at the waist, soft knees, protect your low back. Tuck your chin in, drop the crown of the head, lift your hips high. And if it feels safe for you, allow one leg to lock. Maybe the other leg. Switching from leg to leg, or perhaps Using caution and safety in the low back, straightening both legs at the same time. Inhale, halfway lift. Try placing the fingers on the floor, but keeping that spinal column long and straight. Exhale, round your back, tuck your chin in. Inhale, slowly rise to standing, reach up, look up. Find a deepening back bend. Exhale, namaste, hands to your heart. This time we'll go right into the third one. Inhale up, exhale fold. Inhale halfway, exhale fold. Inhale, let's rise victoriously to standing. Exhale back to Anahata. Find temple mudra now, interlacing all your fingers except for your index fingers and squeeze your palms tightly. And let's remind ourselves that a mudra is a sacred, energetic hand gesture. So as you bring that mudra overhead, reach up through energetic arms, stepping your feet a little closer together, look up and exhale, lean over to one side. Look underneath that top underarm, let the bottom arm pull even further over to the side. Let's inhale, rise, look up at the hands, reset the low back as you exhale, slowly send your hips slightly away from the arms as they reach up and over. Now yawn through your top set of ribs as if you could breathe directly into the heart center. Let's inhale, find center, look up, and on the exhale, bring your head and arms back together so that you have a space in the back of your neck. Send the hips forward, try not to bend the knees, then lift out of your low back as you energetically extend back further, further, further. Inhale, slow rise to center. Separate your hands and feet and exhale, melt forward like a candle. Go slower, slower. Feel the flow of prana. Take your time. Flow with the energy. 
coming into your forward fold. If you're near the, not near the front of your mat, step up to the front of your mat. Halfway lift on the shins or at the floor. Exhale, come into a squat, malasana pose. Let yourself move a little here, protecting the knees. Now, usually we turn the feet out to frog to sit down and call that malasana. That's a great way to open the hips. But for today, let's keep our feet straight ahead as you sit back. Then bring hands to prayer for three, two, three. One, release hands, frame the feet, step back one foot into a lunge. Press through that back heel, keeping the front knee bent forward. Press back a little bit further into that back heel. Now inhale, look up like you're at the start line of a race and you're expecting that rifle to go off and maybe you challenge your core, no hands on the floor for three, two, one, plant your palms shoulder width apart and step that front foot back, coming into your high plank pose. As you press back through the heels, extend through the crown. Now squeeze your inner thighs like you're holding a block there. Engage your buttocks and pull your navel into your spine. Take a deep, full body breath. And on the exhale, if you need the knees down, place the knees down. Or not, but stop halfway. Don't go to the floor. Hold Chaturanga, just like you would any other pose. Hold it. Squeeze tighter along your side body. Hold it. Then slide forward a little bit with your hips before you release to the floor. This will get your hips in a safer zone to your wrist for either a nice low cobra on the mat or big breath in, lift up, lift those knees off the floor, engage and tone through your inner thighs and buttocks and up dog. Tuck the toes and let's lift our hips. We'll push back hips over heels. Send your hips high. Spread your fingers wide on the mat. Then press those hips a little bit higher. Move your shoulder blades away from your spine to the left and the right. Then lift your hips a little bit higher. Extend out of your low back as you point your tailbone towards the back wall. Lift your hips a little higher. Now, keeping a micro bend in your knees, begin to sink your heels slowly, slowly, slowly. Doesn't matter if they touch, who cares? You're just pressing down energetically in that direction. Then inhale, look forward, swing one leg up and around between your hands to find that lunge again. Exhale, step off the back foot, forward fold, hinging at the waist. Inhale, circle sweep your arms to rise to standing pose. Gaze up through your hands. Exhale, namaste, hands to heart center. Pause. Thumbs near your heart. Feel your heart beating in your chest. Take a deep breath. Let it go. Another deep breath. Let it go. Now on this deep breath, hold it and feel your body. Slow release when ready. Inhale, arms overhead. Utita, Tadasana, stretch out long. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, slow rise to standing, or halfway lift rather. Exhale to our squat. Optional, inhale, sit back, hands at namaste for three, two, one, step one foot back. Make sure it's the different foot from last time so that you find yourself in an opposite leg lunge. Make sure you have switched feet. Then look forward, optional, no hands on the floor, core engagement. Plant your palms, step that front leg back, find plank, extend through the feet, out through the crown, engage lower body muscles. Then on an exhalation, Squeeze in your top nine ribs, feel your lats, feel your traps all along the side body, serratus anterior by the ribs, squeeze tight, 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 then inhale, slide forward before you lower down. Nice low moving Bhujangasana or all the way up, Urdhva Mukha, open your heart, lift your knees. Tough toes push back, downward facing dog. 
slowly walk your feet over to the right corner of your mat and find a little lateral lean in your downward facing dog. Then begin to walk your feet over to the left side of your mat, moving it out to the side. Inhale, coming back to center, lift your hips high. Swing that leg around and back up to the front. Inhale, look up. Step up, front of your mat, halfway lift. Exhale, round it back, fold. Inhale, slow rise to standing. Look up through those hands, deepening your back bend. Exhale, namaste, hands to your heart. Close your eyes, take three deep breaths. Remember your blessing, your prayer, mantra, or affirmation that you said to bless your practice at the beginning. Now let's increase our flow with a little faster version of our opening warm-up. From here, we'll inhale, reach the arms up, find your back bend. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold, hinge at the waist. Inhale, halfway lift. Now see if it's in your practice to plant your palms and on the exhale, hop yourself back to Chaturanga. Bend those elbows and stop halfway for three, two, one. Inhale, slide forward, find your version of a back bend. Then exhale, try the Ashtanga foot flip, tucking both your sets of toes at the same time to push your hips high and this will keep you from um, always distributing weight to one shoulder every time you move from up dog to down dog if you can start practicing that foot flip safer for the shoulders from here we'll inhale right leg reaches high for the sky press through that right heel and extend down the leg along your spine and out through your fingers on your exhalation, step that foot up between your hands. We'll slowly rise, coming up with our back heel off of the ground to force us to balance in our high lunge or the OG warrior one. <laughs> Bring your palms together to prayer as you reach your arms overhead. Press through that back heel and extend along your spine and up and out through those arms. Now we'll come into a more familiar version of Warrior One. Put that back heel down on the ground. Separate your hands shoulder width apart as you reach the arms up. Focusing on that heart today, inhale, open your arms wide and lift up right through your sternum. Exhale, namaste hands. Push off your back foot, step up to the front of your mat, sitting down in chair for three two, one, hands frame the front, inhale, hop or step it back, chaturanga on the exhale, inhale, find your up dog, exhale, down dog, inhale, pick up the other leg and press through that heel as you reach through powerful fingers, exhale, step that foot up, Inhale, high lunge, keeping that back heel off the mat. Bring hands together into prayer overhead. Look up, lift up. On your next exhale, slowly revolve back foot, putting heel down, separating hands shoulder width apart. Then inhale, heart opening warrior one, open those arms wide. Exhale, step off the back foot, sit down chair. Inhale, resting mountain, hands outside the thighs. As you stand up, close your eyes. Move your attention to the parameters of your body. Feel the edges of your skin. With your eyes closed, focus on your hair, nails, and the edges of your skin.
Now move your attention a little bit past your skin and feel your auric field. The pranamaya kosha, the energy body. Just around you like an outline. It might be a brilliant blue, like a blue flame. Then bring your attention back to your heart center as the hands find their way to prayer at the heart. We'll inhale, reach the arms up and overhead, looking up through the hands. On the exhale, swan dive forward, fold. Inhale, lifting up halfway. Exhale to a squat. Inhale, step your right foot back, find lunge. Exhale, right knee down. Inhale, slowly rise, coming into this deep lunge as you look forward and up. Exhale, hands frame the front foot. Inhale, front foot slides back to plank. Exhale, push back, down dog. Now, anytime you want to throw in another chaturanga, up dog, down dog, yogi's choice, be my guest. From down dog, we'll inhale, right leg high. Exhale, step it up, lunge. Inhale, warrior two, spiral open your back foot. Start to come up, arms at shoulder height. Look out past your front middle finger. Try to align your crown right over your tailbone and feel that energetic extension from middle finger to middle finger as it transitions across your heart center. Exhale, extended side angle. Try reaching to the outside of your bottom leg or a block or train yourself to begin to reach for the floor. Then bring the other arm overhead, ro revolving for parspo. Side angle, look up underneath that top arm. Uttita parsvo konasana, so stretched out, stretch that top arm. Then let's inhale to rise, straightening that front leg. Turn your palms to face the side. Reach forward for handshake position. Exhale, revolve your arms to 6 and 12. Look down for safety in the neck or look up for a balance challenge. Then try to lean your torso back, feeling a slight back extension here as the back muscles contract. Inhale to rise, prepare for prasarita. Turn your feet in the same direction. Reach your arms out to shoulder height. Inhale, turn your palms up, look up, star. Exhale, begin to hinge forward at your waist. As you come down, place your hands at your ankles or shins. Tuck your chin, lift your hips high. Drop the crown of the head toward the floor. As you push the shoulders towards the ceiling and the head drops to the floor, you'll find space around your neck. Keep pushing the traps up towards the ceiling and allow the head to explore some movements here. Enjoy the benefit of this inversion. So from our wide-legged forward fold, We'll walk our hands around towards the front foot, bending that knee, slide that front foot back, finding your plank. Exhale, chaturanga. If you're doing them, stop and hold them. Chaturanga, say that to yourself. Then slide through and find your up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, left leg high to the sky. Exhale, step it up between your hands. Inhale, slow rise, warrior two. Look out over your front middle finger. So we realize there's a softness in our heart, a loving, nurturing side to the heart, but there's also that green flame, the hottest flame of them all. And 
you can feel that heart fire pulsing here from your heart out through your front hand like a laser beam. Then as you're ready, exhale, extended side angle, try to get off of the bottom thigh, reach for the floor, hold the shin, revolve to look up, extend through the top arm. Then let's inhale, slowly rise, straightening front leg, exhale, find your triangle pose. Look for straight lines. Release Trikonasana, coming up slowly for our nice big prasarita, taking your arms and legs wide. This time, we'll slowly interlace the fingers behind our back for prasarita C. As you come forward, lift your hands up to the ceiling, not overhead. Just notice as the hands come overhead, you bunch up around your neck. But if you can, push the hands up to the ceiling and really feel that heart open. Then when it's appropriate for you, allow the hands to flitter to the floor. And then move organically, yogis. Anything that comes to your mind, just do it. Don't even second question it, just do it. If you have a headstand, this is the perfect opportunity to do your headstand or a handstand, whatever it might be that you feel like doing here. When you're ready, slowly begin to come back to the center of your mat and taking your time, walk your hands around the front foot, step it back to find your plank. Chaturanga or not to Chaturanga is up to you. Meeting together in downward facing dog. Looking at the middle of your mat, try one of those fancy bob hops. So you want to hop up and land lightly. You're trying to bring those feet up and land lightly. Then slowly begin to come up, taking your time. Feel the power of that storm if you can hear it outside my windows. As you start to rise, hit the middle of your mat. Palms facing forward, Da Vinci's man. Feel your connection out of your fingers to the earth, your deep roots into the earth. Think about clay, mud, rocks, gemstones, minerals, all the earth has deep down to the core and you're connected to it all. Then bringing the hands up to hip height, feel your connection to water. Water washes the planet clean. Water is life. Slowly bring your hands up to Shoulder height and feel air, wind, oxygen in your lungs, and bringing the hands to ether. Feel that vata all the way up to space above you. Inhale, look up, reach up. Looking straight ahead for a harder way to get into tree. Keep your hands in prayer overhead. Then without using your hand to help the foot, turn one foot out, press into your prayer hands overhead, and bring that foot to ankle, calf, or up above the knee with no hand. Start to try to train yourself, no hand. 
We always tell you not to put it at the knee, but what we're really trying to say is don't push sideways on your knee. So if your toes are near your knee, it's okay, don't push sideways. Lift out of your hips. Now let your prayer hands separate and blow a little in the wind. If you fall out of the tree, you get right back up and in it. Bring your hands back to prayer hands and release those feet side by side. Take a big breath in, extend up through your arms. On the exhale, slowly turn your other foot out and place that foot at your ankle, calf, or above the knee. Then separate your hands and let your hands move around. Lift out of your hips. Bring those hands back up overhead to prayer and slowly release your tree. Namaste hands at your heart. Bring the right hand back at your side. Palm faces outward, thumb faces back. And make sure there's no twist in your radius and ulna so there's no twist in the forearm. Left hand reaches forward. Bend your right knee and hold the inside of the foot. You can also hold the outside of the foot. Just make sure you don't wind up with that twisted back arm. So untwisted arm outside, inside. Squeeze your knees together tight. Look straight ahead. Now this is not a pretty ballet dancer. I love ballet. I have much respect for ballet. This is a warrior. You are Shiva. So as you start to slide forward with that front hand, push the back hand back by, with the foot. Reach forward and hold your trident in that front hand. Now press into standing leg and extend up and out through the top of the head. Then press the foot back a little further as you reach forward. Energetically unlock this pose as you begin to lift up and back. Now try to land with the knees together just like we started before releasing the pose. Shake out your foot. Slowly switching sides, turn the other hand out, holding the foot inside or outside with no twist in the forearm. Reach the other arm forward. Then slowly begin to press that foot into your hand as you reach the hand forward. Push back, reach forward. Push back, reach forward. Now reach from the foot all the way up through your head. Slowly coming out, knees are touching. And then beginning to release, shake it out. Move around. If you have a water, grab a sip of water, and we'll wrap up our balancing with Eagle Pose. So from the middle of the mat, we'll inhale, sit down in a chair, Send your hips forward, or send your hips back rather, as you reach slightly forward and up. Look up through your palms. Pick up your right knee, put it over the left knee, right arm, elbow under left arm, wrap at the forearms, fingertips to palm. Lean back, not forward, sit down. See if you can pick up the right foot off of the floor, maybe point the toes and wrap it around the back calf muscle. But if you don't wrap, just keep it flexed. Then squeeze your underarm, squeeze your inner thigh, sit down deeper, deeper, deeper. Now try to connect to your heart center in the middle of all this struggle. Try to find the heart in there. And slowly release, step as wide as your mat, arms spread wide, feel the energy flowing in your body. Hopper step to come back to your chair. 
Left leg eagle. Sit back and down. Elbows away from heart center. If you're trying it, try the bind. Take a big breath in. Stay calm in the center in the midst of struggle. Then release. Feel the flood of energy. Shashuna in the center. Ida and Pinga La wrapping around. Interlacing those fingers behind your back as you open your eyes. Roll the shoulders back and lift up through your heart. Lift your chin out of your throat and feel a big stretch. Tucking the chin into your chest. Slowly look a little left. Look a little right. Then notice how your shoulders are moving back as you push the hands down. Try to keep that same action as you come forward, bending at the knees. The shoulders move back away from the floor as the hands lift up over your heart, not your head. Then explore that newfound freedom around your neck. Releasing hands, frame the feet. Step up near the front of your mat. When you're ready, inhale, step or hop your feet back to come into plank. Exhale, halfway chaturanga. Inhale, flow through. Exhale, push back down dog. Inhale, right leg high to the sky. Exhale, pigeon. Lay the leg across your mat, making sure the knee is in a comfortable position. Walk your back leg back two steps. Then inhale to rise away from the floor for King Pigeon. Puff out your chest. Now engage your internal locks. So find the area around your root and squeeze it in and up. Then pull your navel into the spine and lift it up towards the heart. With those two locks engaged, see if you can release your pigeon wings. If your knee and your hip says it's safe, you can begin to explore reaching for the back foot and different arm variations. If you do want to come into resting pigeon, I recommend you don't lay flat. You stay a little bit up and this will protect your knee and decompress your front hip flexor a little bit more. Begin to slowly walk your way out of pigeon. Plant your palms, tuck your back toes, lift the back knee, swing the bottom leg out from underneath you if that works for you, and shake the leg off. Other side, inhale, left leg high. Exhale, left leg pigeon. Walk the back leg back. You can also lay on the back and do the number four pose as if pigeon is not accessible to you. If you do pigeon, try the foundation of the pose, which is king pigeon. As you're ready, come up to your palms, tuck back toes, swing bottom leg out from underneath you and shake it out. Move that front hip flexor around, it can get tight from that pose. Explore that sitting up pigeon if you're able to because it can give you a really nice psoas stretch.
Now from here, we'll slowly lower to our knees, walk our hands back underneath our shoulders, inhale, reach the right arm up, exhale, thread the needle. Now you can stay up high, or I actually like to take the knees wide and sit back in child's legs version of thread the needle. Slowly start to pull yourself back up and move that arm that was under you around a few times. Switching over to the other arm, reach it up high. Exhale, thread the needle. Lower to the side, pulling shoulder blade away from spine. Maybe sit back with the child's leg version. You're unlocking tension around the heart chakra, which originates on the back. The chakras all begin on the back, about the size of a dinner plate, spiraling in different directions. And then they travel through the torso and out the front. Right now, you're releasing tension that may be constricting your heart chakra. Let it go. As you're ready, start to make your way out of the pause and move that arm around. From where you're at, we'll lower the rest of the way to the mat. Inhale, roll your shoulders back, lift up Cobra. Now there's a couple different options of Cobra that I like. One of them is to take your arms out to the side and turn your hands in slightly so the hands turn into an internal rotation as you lift up and you move around like a cobra snake watching out for your low back. A little more mobility here. Then another version of cobra that's fun to play with is interlacing the fingers behind your back in temple grip, then sliding slowly down the inseam of your legs. Try not to overwork the buttocks. Find a resting pose for you. And really commit to relaxing on your mat, let go. Prepare for Shalabhasana as you come out. Look forward, separate your feet as wide as your mat and bring the arms back by your side. I like turning the thumbs up like a hitchhiker which will allow your shoulders to roll back and your scapula and trap to depress and allow to lift up your arms and upper body a little bit higher. Extend up through your feet, lifting your feet off the floor too and then be a locust flying through the air. Start to wake yourself up with your feet. Maybe tuck the toes and tap your feet a little. 
and then lift your knees and slowly work the hands under the shoulders and when it feels right for you push up and slowly come up to kneeling in the middle of your mat start out with your toes tucked and your feet wider than you might normally have them in camel We'll bring the hands to the heart, inhale, lift up both hands, reach up, look up. Circle your arms around and bring them back to your heart. Now just the right arm, inhale, right arm reaches up and around, watch it if you'd like. Maybe it grazes the heel as it makes its, its way back to the heart. Inhale, left arm, exhale to heart, switch. Exhale back to center. Now both hands again. Inhale, maybe reach for both sets of heels. You can untuck the heels as you press the hips forward, but the heels are for pulling against. So you're pulling on those heels or come to your low back, lifting your heart up. Wherever you go, stay there one breath longer than you really want to stay there. As you're ready to come out, slowly come up, round your back, find a happy, gentle kitty cat back so that your back is not over arched. It's feeling nice and rounded and you're getting a nice big lift right through thoracic spine. Try to find that extra little lift right there in middle back. Swing your legs through, tucking your feet under or around to the side. Let's bring the legs around towards the front. Flex the feet towards you. Dandarasana, place the hands by the hips. Push on the floor and extend up and out of your low back. Almost lifting the buttocks, but not quite. Wrists should be just in front of the shoulder cap so you're not impinging the wrist. Push down, lengthen up. Now feel that newfound length and freedom as you exhale and begin to go a little forward. Stop, inhale, push on the floor, lift up. Exhale a little further forward. Now before you go all the way down, look at your toes. If your big toes are pulling in, your inner thighs are tight. If they're pushing away, your outer thighs are tight. Try to keep your big toe, little toe, the same distance from you by activating and pushing through those feet as you exhale round forward. Push through those feet, pull back through your hips. Exhale, engage your inner thighs. Then inhale, reach forward and slowly rise. Exhale, hug the right knee in, giving it a big squeeze. Wrapping the elbow around the knee, reach the right arm up into the sky, stretching long. Lean over slightly laterally, feeling that opening through your side body. Inhale, come back up to center. Exhale, find a twist. I like wrapping around my hand around my low back, and then I can Press lightly against the back to lift up some more. Inhale, unwind your right arm and exhale, come back to the center. Inhale, sit up, bring left leg towards you. Exhale, slowly find your twist. Now check, a lot of times our low back and our neck do all the twisting. See if you can ease out of your low back and your neck and then twist a little more from middle thoracic spine. Releasing when ready. We'll slide our heels towards us, holding the back of the legs as we sit back for Navasana. Slowly lift your feet up off of the ground. Release your hands if available. Maybe straighten right leg or left leg. And then find your hardest boat pose. It might be lifting all the way up or it might be coming halfway down. For three, two, 
and on one slowly drop into your mat, coming all the way down to resting on your mat. Take a few deep breaths here, breathing in and out through your nose. Long deep breath in, and long deep breath out. When you're ready, inhale, reach your arms overhead and find a nice big stretch. On the exhale, hug both knees in, giving both knees a tight squeeze. Maybe bringing forehead towards your knees. Then choose your inversion, yogi's choice for your inversion. You might just do a nice bridge, lifting your hips, technically an inversion, heart above your Head. Maybe you feel like wheels, slipping those hands behind your low back before lifting all the way up off of the floor, or your hands behind the shoulders rather. You could always just do legs up the wall, or perhaps shoulder stand. So you find your inversion, whatever it might be for your practice tonight. Maybe headstand, handstand, crow. Now a lot of times when we're doing energy work, we have to work really hard and getting the energy from the lower three chakras to turn around and head up instead of down. But an inversion does the work for us. So feel that energy from the lower body flowing into the heart and the fire of the heart, that green blue flame, burning up that lower body energy, consuming it, using it to propel you forward. And then when you're ready, start to slowly come out of your inversion and drop your knees to one side. Before Shavasana, see if there's anything your body needs. Maybe you need a different version of the knees down twist. Lots of different versions of these postures. Or maybe you don't want to do knees down twist. You need to do happy baby. or dead bug. If you are doing knees down twist, make your way to the other side, but maybe there's something you need on your way, like a resting cobbler's pose. And then when it feels right for you, make your way into Shavasana. Oh, the sweet, sweet pose at the end. Even though I'm sitting up, you go ahead and make your way into Shavasana posture. Feel the results of your practice in your Shavasana pose. During this Shavasana, stay focused on your heart center. Feel the space around your heart and your chest. If your mind begins to give you a stream of other ideas, ask it kindly to wait and thank it for doing its job and go back to focusing on the space and the heart center.
Swami Kripalu says, the major characteristic of love is the absence of conflict. When conflict is born and increases daily through fault finding, true love gradually diminishes. Where conflict finds fault, love sees vir virtue in the other. Then love increases daily and its flower blossoms fully, spreading its sweet fragrance everywhere. The major characteristic of love is the absence of conflict, which we know from the Yoga Sutras. Managing the modifications of the mind stuff the conflict that the mind creates. So during these times that we're all going through right now, I keep reminding myself when the conflict begins in my mind, the chatter, the chitta. I've been really working hard, it isn't easy, but I've been diligently noticing when it begins to happen, all the conflict, and send it immediately to my heart. Instead of trying to push it away or deny it or hide from it or bury it, I send it right into my heart center. Because I know that what resides within me also resides within you. That light. That light is pure and divine. It can be the sweetest, most comforting light there is. And it can be a fearsome, powerful, transmutive, and transformational fire. So explore the green flame of your heart when things start to creep up on you from internal or external conflict. Try sending it to your heart's fire because your heart will then learn to consume that energy and transmute it into positive energy to propel you forward in life towards achieving your life's goals. Your reason for being here. Thank yourself for your practice. We thank each other, and I know we can feel each other through this digital world. May peace descend upon this planet and begin in our neighborhoods and in our own hearts. Cultivate that heart energy. Om Shanti 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 Namaha If you would like to, Om with me. No pressure. If you don't want to, you could hum like a bumblebee again. It's just sound. We'll take a big breath in together when ready. And let out one big Om. Om. Love and gratitude, and thank you for continuing to support your local yoga studio, Elevate Yoga Center, and all it does uh, by being here. And thank you for warming my heart today and giving me something to smile about. Namaste.